What is up, Nerf Nation? I'm Naptown Nerf, and this is an unboxing and review of the Adventure Force Thermal Tracker from Busby Toys. Now, Busby was nice enough to send me these free for review, and that is awesome, but that will not change my opinion on the product. But I'm very grateful to get these so I can review them for you guys. So, this is a pretty cool new blaster from Busby and Adventure Force, and I can't wait to take a look at it. So let's go ahead and check out the box here. So last year they came out with the Thermal Hunter and that came with a heat seeking scope. And yes, it will allow you to know where your opponents are even if they are not visible just by a thermal tracking device, which is really, really cool. And this is telling us that that will work up to 60 feet away, which is a pretty decent range. This is a pretty cool looking bolt action magazine fed blaster that I can't wait to crack open, but let's look at the back of the box real, real quick. It's just basically showing you an overview of the blaster. It says there's 14 different pieces with this product. I'm guessing some of that is the darts because I don't see 14 different pieces just to assemble the blaster or that will attach and reattach to the blaster, but uh, that's an interesting uh, marketing ploy there, but uh, let's go ahead and crack this thing open. All right, grab some wire cutters because that's gonna work much better than a knife on these zip ties. And if, in case you didn't see it, this is advertising 100 feet. So we will definitely check that out on the range a little later in the video. Let's get this thing open. All right, you get your thermal tracker blaster, you get a 10 round magazine, you get your thermal scope, which is pretty cool, but will require three AA batteries to work. You get a Busby to Nerf rail adapter, which is pretty cool. So if you wanna put your thermal scope on a Nerf blaster, this will allow you to do so. So that's pretty neat. And you get 10 long distance Busby darts. So as I suspected, the 14 pieces includes the 10 darts and then four other pieces to make 14, obviously. And there's the thermal tracker all assembled, pretty cool. Has a pretty nice foregrip thing, kind of looks like a shotgun pump grip, but it's just a grip, it doesn't do anything, but pretty comfortable, not too bad there. The stock back here is adjustable, which is really cool. Trying to see if it'll lock in in a mid position. It seems like it should. So it does look like it has a midpoint, but I can't get it to lock in enough to not be forced back forward. When it is fully extended, it's pretty good, but I have a feeling if I put enough force on that, it will collapse forward again. But that's pretty good, and the stock is actually pretty darn comfortable. Pretty good distance. Uh, that, that is a pretty good, pretty nice feel, I do think. The main grip on the blaster is pretty large. It's not too bad. It's a little bit cramped in here. I don't really care for this design and this blue part makes it feel a little funky, but you know, it's not horrible, but it's definitely not my favorite grip in the world. There's a lot going on here that I think is a little unnecessary. There are two different rails to put your thermal scope. There's one back here and then you can ratchet it off. It kind of ratchets there and then you can slip it on there and kind of ratchets, ratchets onto the front there, which is pretty cool. Obviously you have your bolt where you pull back to load your magazine inside and then you prime forward and put your bolt down to prime the blaster completely. So that's pretty cool and she is ready for fire. So let's go ahead and take a couple shots. Let's go ahead and prime that bolt back and we will hit our magazine release right under here and drop out our magazine. Pretty cool, so that's how that works. That's your magazine release. Just a button underneath, but it does allow people that are left or right handed to get to that, so that's nice. The stock did not collapse on me, so that was good when I was firing the blaster, so that's really, really nice. Go ahead and put that forward. There is an opening here, so if you have a jam, you don't even have a jam door, there's just an opening. So that's an interesting look. That's not a uh, 
bad feeling blaster definitely a decent size so let's go ahead and throw some batteries in this scope take it outside and see how she performs all right you guys we'll go ahead and try to get some readings over the chronograph with the thermal tracker the sun is going down the days are getting shorter here in indiana but we will hopefully get some readings it's a bit windy so i guess take all this with a grain of salt but this is the day i have to do it so let's see what we got 66 and these are the darts that it comes with air Oh, we got a jam. First jam there. Not great, but you know, it happens sometimes, especially with a breech loading system like that. 57. Huh. Not the greatest FPS right now. 65. There. We're gonna go ahead and switch to something else. We'll go ahead and throw in a worker mag with some AccuFakes. See how those do. 56. 54. Not getting the greatest ranges either, so I would just think that these readings are pretty accurate. 56. So, go ahead and switch out to another mag. And these are the Adventure Force Waffle Head darts, and these aren't bad, so we're gonna go ahead and give those a whirl. 73 that's our best reading so far these are much better darts than the ones that they actually come with so I prefer these over the Busby long distance darts just for accuracy and the range the FPS is obviously not much worse we'll find out about the ranges here in a second 51 51 Never mind the Halloween noises. 62. All right, we'll check out the ranges here. So, looks like the shortest one was one of those long distance darts just past 24 feet. We got a couple here around that 30 mark. Some, a little bit of everything there. A few more around that 32 mark. Some AccuFace and that waffle, one of the waffle Adventure Force darts and then I would say the majority went around here, about 34 feet, 35 feet, 36 feet in that range. So that's pretty good. And then a few went up here. We have the long distance darts, about 41 and a half feet. And this one may be a little shorter, about 40 and a half feet. And I don't know, did any of you go past that? Not the greatest ranges. I was expecting a little better performance. The wind probably did affect things a little bit, but you know, it is it is what it is. I mean, I feel like the blaster is pretty good, but the performance is not quite up to the Busby norm. Uh, usually we're getting up closer to that 80 FPS with, you know, Busby blasters from a couple years ago. So I'm not sure if this one has a different spring load or what. Okay, you guys, so this is very difficult to shoot on video and capture kind of how this product works but I'm gonna do my best here the way you set this is you point it at a cold object or a room temperature object and hold the set and it will flash between a green and red crosshair and then it will set after a few seconds and that will capture the normal temperature and then when something warm comes in front of it like my hand it will turn red and hopefully you guys can see that it's very like I said very difficult to capture but then once my hand goes away it will turn green again so green red 
green, red. Now, this product will not work when it's outside in the sunlight. It will work at night, but it won't work outside in the sunlight because it just it, it can't detect the thermal temperature. And obviously, a thermal scope is not really needed during the day. It's meant for nighttime use or dark use. So it will still have a function of some sort. It will have a blue crosshair when it's out in the light uh, outside. So you still can use it as a normal scope, but you can't use it as a thermal scope outside. And that's kind of why I couldn't get a action photo and shot of this, but it is a pretty cool product for a toy. I mean, it does work pretty well considering what it is and it's very impressive. So I think this blaster is pretty cool. I think it's a pretty good blaster. There are a few things that I don't like about it, but overall I think it's pretty nice. The performance wasn't quite up to the Busby standard. I don't know why that was, but it definitely was not hitting quite as hard as what we're used to with Busby, kind of like the Sentinel. But all in all, I think it's really cool. I do like this adjustable stock. I think it's really nice that you can move this back and it locks in pretty darn well pretty nice it has a nice curve to it so it's pretty darn comfortable it doesn't really have a lot of texture back there so it's a little slick but I do I do think it's really really nice I don't think it has a medium setting I think I was wrong there it just goes all the way out or all the way in and there's a button on this side that kind of goes back and forth so you just push that in and it will lock in on the front and the all the way in part and then it's a little sticky so it's a bit tricky so that's why I kind of think it was thought there was a middle position but there I think there's just two and it does lock in once you get it all the way back and it doesn't really collapse at all so that's really really nice the grip is probably my biggest issue with the cosmetics of this blaster it's very strange just this big bulky trigger guard here is very interesting I, and there's only really two spots to put fingers here so I kind of found myself wanting to put my bottom two fingers there another one resting underneath the trigger guard there and then obviously my main finger finger on the trigger but that isn't the most comfortable grip it's a little awkward and yeah it's just a really bulky back here it's a little weird it's not super small it's definitely better than the thermal hunter that had a really small grip but this is still not great so a little weird i do really like the grip they have up front here that's really nice and a really nice place to hold i like that a lot the size of the blaster is nice. This, the length of the stock is pretty darn good. Now, the scope here, I think, is a really cool product. I think it works really well for what it's intended to do. And I think it's definitely something fun for kids to play with, you know, if they want to do some sort of game around their house at night. I think this is something that could be really worthwhile having on your blaster. I think it's definitely something fun. I'm not sure how practical it is for normal like hardcore nerfers like myself you know we do most of our play where you can see people you're not really going to be looking through this and even at nighttime i don't think this is something i would probably rely on but for kids i think this is a definitely fun thing and i never thought that this would be a thing in the toy world but this it is and it's super cool so really think that this is a neat product and if you like a bolt action Springer blaster, I think this is definitely something to look into. It's really cool. I really like the bolt action, although not super practical for normal war uses. I think it's definitely something fun and really cool. So thank you, Busby, for sending this my way. I think this is a sweet blaster. The thermal tracker is definitely cool. You can pick this up at Walmart as it's an Adventure Force blaster, and that line is sold only at Walmart. So check out your local Walmart or walmart.com for this product. I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can find it. Thank you so much for watching. Smash that like button. Please subscribe. And as always, guys, peace out.